fair use, I think, creates some really interesting problems for filmmakers. And as someone who's been involved in distributing independent work, um, here's how it kind of goes at our company. Uh, and I would say we replay this call almost daily. Someone calls up and asks if we have a particular copy of a movie. And if we do, we say we do. And they say, well, will you overnight us a copy? You know, we're doing some research and so on. And we, of course, say, well, that's not a home use copy. You should pay more money. And, and, and that becomes, for our staff, an argument. But ultimately, the works are out there, and people get them. And um, when I created, for example, the Robert Drew archive in the 70s, and got with Bob the rights to all of his films about Kennedy and jazz and basically America between the period 1960 to 1963, um, he recaptured all those rights for the Drew Archive. Um, it included a lot of footage that was unique uh, featuring uh, the Kennedys. And the image that was stolen the most frequency, frequently was the image of, of John F. Kennedy in his rocking, rocker, sort of pondering the um, integration of the University of Alabama. And that one shot was basically underwriting the whole archive because people would pay for it. $3,000, $5,000, $10,000, $25,000 to use the shot. Along comes serious. Along comes this whole, let's, let's look at it copyright differently. And that same shot is used in a documentary by a British company that's on public television, and they have the, um, the fair use of legal opinion not authored by uh, Michael's firm. Uh, they have E&O insurance, and Bob Drew is living. And we go to PBS and we say, we really you know, are not happy about the shot being used, and we absolutely hit the wall. Now, from your perspective, what does this mean? What are we talking about? Well, if you're making films, you can use providing the means of test footage. Um, but if you're making films, what do you say to someone? Um, we were just shooting a sizzle reel for a project I'm doing in the LA City Catholic school system here in Los Angeles. What do we say when, when we promise our participants that will use their footage in an ethical way, that we won't use the kids uh, in a way that will be harmful to them in the long term, because once the footage is out there, it's out there, right? And, and here you are working with, with 13, 14, 15, 16 year old kids uh, with, from very, very poor parts of our community, making a film about their life and embedding with them for a year. Clearly, clearly, we as filmmakers want to protect our subject. But what happens with fair use? What happens when the next Davis Guggenheim is doing his picture or her picture, uh, waiting for Superman, and needs shots of poor, underserved kids in public schools or a Catholic school um, struggling? And it needs a safe harbor test. How do you explain to those kids and their parents that they're image teachers, that these images that were supposed to be in your movie exclusively are suddenly in someone else's movie? How do we protect our subjects? 